Greetings everyone, how are you? This is Anthony Gray of Grayscale Painting. As you see before you, we have two sheets of 8x10 canvas um, pad um, paper. Okay, it's actually just canvas, uh, no backing on it. So you peel it apart, it's going to be pretty flimsy. All right, um, it's just practice paper. As you can see, I sketched out yet another barn. But in thinking of composition, this barn is made in a certain way that um, I can put it dead center and it is still look like a barn on either side even when you split the paper in half. Okay, so that's the general idea of this. All right, um, I'll most likely would do um, pine trees, deciduous trees. I'll probably put a mountain on this side all right, so it's still going to be one painting overall, but still thinking in terms of two separate paintings. All right, all right. It's pretty warm here in the room, so the glycerin will be a little, little, a little runny. But like I said, I don't really need too much of this. Just really a real soft coating of it. All right, just rub it in real good into the uh, fabric here. I don't need it to go all the way down. A very little bit of this stuff goes a long way. You don't need an excessive amount of uh, glycerin. If you put too much on it, it'll start to run. All right, so if you got heavy body paint like I have, um, you're better off. It works better with heavy body paint. All right. Right now, I'm just really concentrating more or less on the sky obviously All right. and you can pretty much see where I stop and where it where it is because glycerin is very reflective okay I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white now you guys won't see the palette um, with these videos but I'm going to start here on the bottom just to get a little bit of a glow just toward the bottom area really all right I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna take a little corner of dark blue. I'll show it to you here. Just a corner. And we're gonna put it just up on top here. Something like that. I'll kind of wave it in here a little bit. All right. Get another small corner of dark and just in the corners. It needs a little more dark than that. Gotta really differentiate the differences here. And I'm just putting it in there like that, more or less. Okay. I'll just take some of this sky blue color. And we'll work this sky blue color in with the rest. Just work it right in there. I'll blend all of this. I just want to work in the color itself. Alright. Come down below the other blue. Blend it right in. And just move it downward. Once again, I will blend in all of this. I just want that nice sky blue color just kind of put it work its way in there like that okay all right and what we'll do we'll work from the dark and we'll just go in large circular patterns I just want these to blend nicely once again be mindful to always clean that mop brush so you don't run into any situation like um having to uh, really correct it and re-clean it and go through all that hassle. Just clean them and clean them well the first time around and you won't have to really deal with it. I'm just doing X strokes once again just to um, even out the strokes there. And just give a nice gentle blend to all of this. Okay. I probably could deal with this being a little darker on the corners, a little bit more. So I'm gonna work that back in there. I'm just gonna get a little bit more blue. I just want a deeper, darker. I'll just move it around a bit. 
it's just, I just want it darker for me. And I'll just blend in the edges there. It's just, I prefer, I want preferably a, lot, a darker, darker corner. Your blending brush will even out everything else. A little darker on the other corner also. It's just me working in a little bit of aerial perspective. And the more you press, the more it's gonna blend and fade in. And you can use your blender to smooth it all out. Once again, I just want it darker for me. It's a preference thing. And we're gonna work clouds in there. Like I say, on this site where I'm at, it's gonna be a mountain here anyway. But still, I still wanna work in some. here excuse my head I know you see that let's take a fan brush doesn't really matter what size I'm just gonna get some cloth swirling in there okay all right I'll just use the uh, large fan brush and I'll just get some white paint and we'll start to where you see all this glowing this lighter color and we'll just kind of pop it in there like so work it down in here a little bit I'm just gonna get some more paint the glycerin to keep this pretty active. I'll come down here, stir it around a little bit. Just playing. It's like you know you're playing the mud. Just having a good time. Let it do what it do. Alright. Just because of the wild nature of them and, and what you can do and everything and then I'll just kind of wisp and fade get some nice little trailing bits in there and then I'll just lightly just blend if I want the intensity to stick around I won't blend as much okay I like to blend on the bottom this is just my preference blend the bottoms out kind of blend it into the previous color once again, this is just my preference. It don't necessarily have to be yours. If you don't want it, don't do it. And you can kind of play around with it there. And then blend that bottom out if you would like. I'm still looking, I'm checking out things here. I can get rid of there like that you see how they just kind of work itself okay very 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 cool way to do your cloths I'm gonna mix a little bit of black a little bit of white give me a nice light gray happening here I won't put any glycerin or anything on this but we just need um Put it right here. Something like that. All right. We'll just kind of put a little body to it and we'll lightly just kind of fade it out. I'll fade it out with a blender brush there. All right, that's about as much of the bulky mountain that I want for this half anyway. And I'll just blend out the rest. It. Just make sure it blends out right. Let's try this. Yeah, it's a little better. Mm. 
it's kind of funny that um, how fickle you can be. when choosing a uh, mountain color. Let's go to the darker half. I'm adding a little black to the white and maybe a touch of dark blue to it. Now this paper is kind of on the oh it's not the it's not the, the um largest paper in the world so keep that in mind. some of this color and have at it. Probably have to get it a little bit darker to show a little bit of um, contrast between this mountain. So we're gonna have to darken it, deepen it a little bit. No problem. I'm using the sky blue and a little black just to, just to get a little bit more contrast to, to the mountain here. take a similar color we'll go back with um actually I'll try I'll do it with a small fan brush I kind of want some taller um, pines and we'll try to work those in there I'm using some of that blue a little touch of black into that blue we'll gray it out a little bit a little more blue a touch of white in there that should be okay we'll work on this side over here I want the pines to kind of be in the background back there oh we'll kind of bring them up maybe this high and we'll kind of we'll 
we'll kind of pop them in there like this. They're not too, uh, they're, you know, they're in the back back there. And we'll kind of pop, pop one right in here a little bit. Kind of, kind of mash and mesh in the background. Not too much as far as uh, details, whatever. Well, you were thinking of general shapes here. That's all. Put another big one right up here like this. Once again, it's pretty much kind of light in the sky. All right. Bring it down there to the bottom a little bit. You still see little bits of clouds and stuff. They have to be a certain height. Or it's not going to work. Okay. Once again, they got to be of a certain height up here. Make them pretty tall. Because there's going to be smaller deciduous trees in front of these giants. dip into this color. I hope I got enough to do this. We'll see. And we're going to get some deciduous trees in there. We're going to kind of get in some very interesting kind of shapes happening in there. Come up here a little bit. And bring it out and down. Bring it downward. Down in here. Once again, we're getting interesting little shapes out here a little bit. Like I said, I hope I have enough. No, doesn't look like I will. We're coming over here by the other mountain area. And I want to get the framework of the trees right up on top. look like something. They're going to be pretty solid down here. It's all right. Obviously, they're not going to remain this weird gray. I'll green them up a little bit. But I think we're, we're somewhat all right here like that. All right. Most game, we're fleshing out things and getting it kind of tight. going to use a little bit of yellow I still got some black so yellow and black makes green it's gonna make a dark enough green to where it will look um, pretty good so I'm mixing a little bit of black and yellow together taking taking a lot of extra paint off the brush I'm just using pure thick paint right off the right off the brush here all right and we'll come here and we'll kind of tap in some very unique little shapes just like so don't, don't destroy all of your, your gray color though. Now usually a thinner color will work better, but right now I'm just working with the texture. And we'll kind of highlight them a little bit. But this is really getting really chunked up here. So you're not gonna see too much as in detail. It's a little dark. So we'll lighten it up a little bit so you guys can see exactly what the heck is going on back there. I'm gonna come over here. We'll do the same thing. I'll just 
I'm just using the corner of the brush. Even a little, little press up here. Come down a little bit. You want some of that gray color to be uh, shown through. But things that get to shape up a little more as you um, pop in a few highlights. Now when I say highlights, I, I don't want it super gaudy bright. Cause you know these guys are in the back. Yeah, I got what it takes. Right, you didn't have the, 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 the uh, highlights hit where the, Lord, the light sources will be. And you'll see that once I, I lighten this stuff up. Let's dip into a little bit of, um, I'll just use sap green. Right. And we'll go where the highlights will be, which will be probably on the right hand side, or on the left hand side. Just like that. And once again, you need some of this loose paint, a gentle touch. All right. And get some peculiar shapes going on with them. You don't want it to be entirely super bright. Interesting little groupings of this color. All right, bring some of it down here a little. Always have a, a, a little touch of um, depth in there so you space out this, this green stuff. The bright stuff, space it out a little, a little better, like so. Okay. We're gonna go on the other side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, thicken up this paint. It's still gonna be looser than what we had, but we're gonna thicken it up just a little bit. Sometimes it's oversaturated with the water. All right, and we're gonna come here and we're gonna kinda, once again, get some interesting little shapes happening there. Nice little groupings. Okay. You want general shapes. All right. Depending on the size of your trunks, okay, that, that kind of gives away uh, how big they are, how close or how far away. I'm just going to use the palette knife here. We'll scratch in some. some up here a little bit like that come on down here bring a grouping in there have some kind of branch off there and bring a couple there like that all right just a few bits in there you don't have to start right from the bottom you can come in there like that um, put one up here put a couple in here like like so Let's kind of enlarge that one there. Come in here. Have a branch or two kind of break off somewhere. Like that. All right, they don't have to really be blatantly white. You can pat some of that down. You can, you can soften some of those. So if they're a little too bright, kind of tap them in there a little bit, kind of see this easily hide some of those so they're not too blatantly bright so you can kill some of that you'll still see them but they won't be like in your face like that all right but you can see them in there okay just like that all right the trees in the back the, the, the large pines can be Pretty much kind of grayed out back there and give a sense of depth still the mountain 
obviously it's kind of grayed up like the trees so you're not really losing anything there all right okay um let's start with the land now all right all right we still got some of this green and black and we'll just use a little bit of black use a little bit of green and really it's just blocking in now you're gonna block in kind of how you want your land to be okay let's block it in one it gets rid of you having to keep looking at a blank sheet of paper follow me just block it on the paper itself it's just on the paint I'm just scumbling in some, just scumbling the color in there. Doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be perfect. You just, once again, just I'll get some over here. Just bring it down here. Just blocking in that color. Once again, this is. This is canvas sheet, all right? So it's just canvas without the hard backing. It's like a roll of paper, really, but it's canvas. That's all it is. Alrighty, something like that back there. All right, just like that. No more, no less than what you see. Tapping around. Let's go over here on this side. And what we're gonna do is just take it, we're gonna slide it across very gently, just slide. Slide it across. Rush around, slide it across. Interesting little grass patterns there. But the grass patterns aren't like really rough, really smooth. Probably would need a little more white, but it's okay. So it looks like, the, you know, you got a little, little, the grass has been mowed much a little bit of yellow you can do for some more white actually I'm gonna go over here on the other side and get a nice little yeah see it can do with a little bit of white it's not obviously it's not bright enough and once again very lightly just very lightly just kind of kind of caress it in there We can take some of it away so it's a little heavy handed. Don't worry about that. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna add some more of that love right up here. Pop it in there. Just like so. Get that nice hill look there. Not necessarily getting rid of all of that, all of that dark. Okay. All right. I'm gonna we'll start adding little bits and pieces of uh, grass uh, texture in that. the um for our, our grass pattern so we're just gonna kind of pop them in there just i'll make it look hill like for a little bit for a few of them it's more textured than anything all right then we can come out here and now as i'm doing this softly you really want texture which is what you're looking at right now and you can you can literally beat some of that down a little bit just 
just like that all right you can still see that it's grass but it's not super wild and wooly or anything like that it still looks like it's been manicured pe uh, pretty well I remember I think two paintings all right we didn't even get to the light or the shade part yet all right we're just pretty much blocking in texture blocking in a little texture of the grass there So overall, it still looks like one painting. Okay. Excuse me if my head's in a way I think it is. I'll get it out of the way. It's just hard to see with the glare. Okay. All right. So as I'm looking at it here, I'm thinking about, mm, I think I know where the shadow is going to be. The shadow's going to be more or less over here. Okay, actually I can probably get away with just that sap green It's a little on the dark side compared to what we have. So I'm going to use a little bit of a Prussian blue. You don't need much of this. Okay. All right. I got a larger fan brush. I'll show it to you in a minute. I'm dipping the green and the Prussian blue together. All right. Um, here's the fan brush. A little larger fan brush. Okay, so over here, we're going to have an interesting bits of shadow right around in here. We'll kind of spread it out like that. And then you're going to get some interesting grass shapes happening in there. Make it look kind of natural. Don't blanket all, all of it. Leave little gaps. All right. And you don't want it to really be a solid straight line, kind of soften that line a little bit, all right? Okay, we're gonna get some more of this color. <coughs> and um, we'll uh, pop in a little bit of that love, probably from here, back here. But not go all the way. We're gonna get a slight touch of white. Slight touch of white. We'll, we'll pop some sunlit uh, grass in there. And then we'll kind of, see that? Pop it in there. And bring some of it into the shaded area a little. Like that. If it's not bright enough and it's not add a touch more white once again we're playing around with a uh, little bit of sunlight so we'll kind of make it sporadic but keep it somewhat neat all right so you got a nice little patch of light there all right, we're gonna do the same thing over here on this side. Just a gentle, very gentle couple of dots. Little gentle patches of light. Once you get a bunch of it, you kind of spread it out. Come out here. You bring some of that into the shaded area a little bit. Okay. But you see it's not gaudy, super gaudy bright. But you can bring some stronger batches in there. 
All right. And I'll, I'll show you in a second here. All right. All right. Now, I'll get some yellow. We'll, we'll tease a, 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 a wee bit of, of um, glow right in that. The top. All right. That'll work. The brighter the highlight, the less of it you need. Put it where it will peak, which is on the top of the hill here. Okay. And then we'll kind of lighten up. Just in little bits, little patches will kind of lighten it up. Yeah. Particularly around the shaded area, um, where it begins to get shaded, you can kind of lighten it up with a little bit of sunlight patches in there. Creep some into the shadow there. And stand back and look at what you're doing. All right. See if everything's still kosher. It looks, it looks right for you. Just like that. Taper off a little bit. Once again, you sneak a little bit of that bright into that shaded area. Just a little bit. All right. I think so far we're still moving at a pretty decent clip. So we're doing all right. If you would like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get a little micro touch of white, some of this yellow, and we're gonna caress just the tops of the trees a little bit. I guess it's just gonna show you exactly where the sunlight is beating at here. Not too much, not all over the place. We'll put some like on a very tippy, tippy top back there like that. Just to kind of, see that? And maybe a, a little bit of something back there. Just, you know, just a, a hint of something going on over there. All right. But only on one side. So it appears to be just on one side. All right. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna keep this brush out. We're gonna add a little bit of, um, just a little bit of color. I'm gonna use one dot of red. Some little red, some red flowers popping in there real quick. Just a, a nice little light spray. And just in little areas, little patches. I don't want the whole thing caked in red. Pop a few, just dangling right in the shaded area just a little bit. We'll put some of these fellas back here. Just a, a few in the corner there. Okay, just like that. I don't need too many. All right, if anything, I want more blue in them. Blue bells are cool. So we'll use, the, do a couple blue bells in there. See if that makes a cut. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. They'll probably show up in the shade area a little bit better. But we, we got some bluebells happening. They're not really gonna show too much back there. But up in the up up front here, they'll they'll show pretty somewhat decently. All right, so and yeah, you can see little patches of bluebells. But this this grass is a little more manicured. All right. Okay. So not 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 too bad, I guess. All right. Not too bad. All right. Um, I can't really add anything else until the barn is done. All right, so what I'll do right now, take the tape off and show you what the barn looks like. Remember, there's a painting on the left side, there's a painting on the right side. All right, I wanted a mountain here. I know I wanted decidu uh, deciduous trees back there, but I also wanted pine trees, but the pine trees have to be huge. But 
yeah, in order for them to be that large, they're gonna have to be further back. So they're painted in, in this gray um, back here. Pretty nondescript, they're just back there. All right, just stuff in the distance, okay. And you got clouds, you know, showing through them and everything. And, you know, you got some stuff showing through on these guys, okay. Um, your edges are always so important, not necessarily the middle, but the edges. And then, you know, when you edge in general highlights and such, okay, they're not super glaring. It's not really gaudy and bright. All right, enough of me um, yakking. Let's peel this, um, peel this tape off, okay? Okay. I'm taking an exacto knife. Now, I, I used two inch tape to do this, okay? And this is canvas paper. Now I have paint, um, drawn out this barn in black ink. All right. So it's important that I used to mention that. Okay. So it doesn't eat careful peeling this stuff off. Now, obviously this is a little thicker, a little stronger than um than um regular paper. So but there you go, there's the barn. And obviously you see the tape running right through the middle of the barn. And that's okay. Remember this is all about composition now. Okay. But because of the barn size and the way it's designed, alright, when you cut it in half it still looks like a part of another separate part of a barn with the ramp and then the other half looks like an entirely different barn but it's still a half of, of the paper and half of the paper on this side but overall it's, it's still a whole painting so you have to think composition on both sides all right so you know we have our mountain on this side but we have a grouping of trees on this side both sides got clouds in them okay and, and they're um, trees on each side okay now we still got things in the foreground to add remember you still got to think total picture here okay all right so when I uh, come back which will be a quick transition for you guys we will work on um, we'll work on the bar all right hey welcome back well, I decided to make this a two-part video because the barn's gonna take a little time to do and then the um, items in the front. Okay, so in the last video, I peeled this apart. I peeled the tape off and the barn's in simple black and white form. We're gonna work on the cobblestones. And what I'm going to do for the cobblestones is just take um, a half-inch brush, some water, and we're just going to wet the uh, canvas paper here. And I'm going to use a little dot of black um, paint with a, a little liner brush and just kind of make a little, you see how the water bleeds into the, into the rock area? I'm only doing it really on the bottom end. All right. And it's gonna give that kind of faded rock look to it. And I'm going to do this pretty much all over the, all over the place here. Kind of shade it and the water kind of blends it each one and so kind of makes its own little rock shadow type of deal happening all right now obviously the water sucks into the paper a little bit it kind of bleeds through and I expect that to happen that's kind of what I want to happen and uh So, you be doing this quite a bit of time, uh, quite a bit, but you'll 
and you'll like the look with it when it finished because it will look like faded cobblestones in there with its own shadows and such and I'm just tapping the color on there let it fade let it bleed a little bit all right now I'm doing this on a vertical surface so obviously with water and gravity it goes down but the water will only travel to the part where it's wet so it, it um, it's not gonna go past it really okay but as you can see how the how the ink or the paint starts to kind of spider out kind of what you what you would want to move around and whatnot but like I said since I'm on a vertical surface the water is going to travel downward so it's going to pool on the bottom and it's okay you you want ver variations okay I can take it and borrow some of that dark and bring it up here a little bit because as it starts to fade it turns a little a little on the gray side but you can see what it's starting to look like here so you can get all sorts of little crevices and shadows going on with it all right it makes a pretty cool effect but once again when you put the water on it, it does pool down towards the bottom so you at times would have to work kind of briskly especially if you go from the top down towards the bottom you gotta sort of add just enough water to it for it to get that little bit of a fading. And if it doesn't, you don't see it kind of bleed around and add a little water to your to your uh, your paint. So it can inspire out a little bit. a little too much you can always take a, a dry brush and soak up some of that water but the gray look is pretty cool kind of what you you want so I can take some of that water and gray up the rocks a bit it just adds tones to your rocks real quick take some of this black and kind of put it over here thin it out Just like that and there's your cobblestones that fast I'll soap up some of the water down below because the water is only going to travel to where it's in, um, the ink or the paint will only travel to where the water is built up at just wet it up a little bit like so take the smallest dot of black paint and you just kind of work it in there like this and just like so and it's just the smallest dot of, of uh, paint get it to move around spider around a little bit slow it around I don't push pause, no, I push play. Just I won't like stop so. till I make a change. All right. I withdraw on the things I make. I turn flaws into flawless traits. I'll take some black from the other side. Kind of I won't stop till I put it in there a little bit. Just like so. I'm going to get some more black. And once again, just kind of darken in some spots, some extra crevices. This adds depth. To your rock see this just kind of play around with the edges a little bit and once you got it you just move on to the next section all right now it's all going to look the same until you start to glaze 
um, your light and dark shades of the uh, corners. All right. Very simple process. Nothing to get really nervous about. You're really just going over the lines that you've already done. It's just that fast. Just that simple. All right. Little little dot here and there. Let the let the water spread it out for you. The water's going to do the work for you when you do this. See this? Maybe some of the rocks you can you can totally cover in. All right. Kind of underneath the building is pretty dark anyway. Now, if it starts to dry up on you, don't worry about that. And this is once again, this is canvas, a canvas sheet. All right. I'll have to take a little bit of water and just kind of glaze some of that over there like this. And after you glaze it over, once again, you can continue with the, the dark black because it's already wet. And you kind of mess around and go over it again with this solid black color. You can you can color some of the rocks in, make it look like some of the mortar kind of chipped away. Just like that. Bring it in there. Put it right in there. I can go back over here and darken this up a little bit. Make it look like the uh, the building is actually setting on these stones. So it got a little bit of a shadow work in there. All right. So it starts to look like that. Pretty cool effect. All right, we'll go on with this ramp here and do pretty much the same exact thing. Okay. Or I can just take it. Let's try something. Let's, well, let's do something else. Let's just take some black and a lot of water. Okay. And we'll just shade it in like this. So now you already got your gray for your rocks. Don't worry. Don't worry about none of that down there. Now you already got your got your gray. Just take some black paint. And you know the paper is already wet, okay? And just do some some of those right down in the bottom. That's the window there. I don't want to do the window necessarily, so we'll leave the window alone over there. I'm just taking a line of black paint in a in a liner brush. See this? Some of them you completely cover, but now you you see how it's starting to starting to work here all right just like that come on in there you can kind of color some in you're getting different tones and variations of gray some of it's jet black and just pretty much going over the lines See, the canvas is still wet, so it's giving a nice soft edge look. You can tell when the canvas is starting to dry because you're not going to get that bleeding over, that spidering of the water and the paint, which in itself is okay. That's fine because you can always go back over and rework it again. Put a little gap in there like that down in here. As it starts to dry, you can go back over with some of that dark, that black. Once again, this adds quick depth to your artwork, real fast. Just like that. Alright, just like so. Add a little more. Alright, now. We're gonna pull back a little bit. I'm gonna show you something here. On this section, right here, it's a little, um, the sun is not over here on this section, so it's a little darker. Okay, all right. So we can add a little bit of uh, shade 
to this area. I'm gonna take a little touch of a, a little touch of blue. I'm gonna mix it. Um, it'll be more blue than black. But what I'm gonna do is take some of this blue. And I'm going to water it down a bit. Get kind of a bluish black glaze going on here. Alright, and so over here on this side, all right, I'll add. You see this bluish black in there? That's it right there. Just like that. And we're going to, this is the shadow side. Alright, now remember, this side is already dry just using water and paint. And so I emphasize a little bit, uh, just to emphasize the darkness over there on that side. I'm gonna get a little bit more blue, touch more black. Okay. And then I'm gonna make the other side a little darker. I'm gonna get just a touch of water. This side, um, do the same thing essentially. acrylic paint um, dries really fast especially if you're just using water as your medium just like that okay now depending on what side you want darker or not you just go over it again all right we already have start established that color there so what I can do if I want just a tad darker on one of the sides I'll add a little bit of black to this blue mix and I'll go back over this side over here, which is directly being blocked from the sun. So we'll make it just a hair darker. Just like that. Just a hair darker. Just like so. And then that is that. Okay. So now you've got the lit side. And you have the darker side. Okay. Now, since I'm already on this side, uh, starting from this corner, okay, let me pull back a little bit. I can take some of this newfound glaze here. I'm just using water. I'm gonna use a touch of blue. And maybe, maybe this would be it. Maybe this is just enough. It's just a little bit of blue. It's got a slight touch of black. I'll add a little bit more. And I'm gonna glaze the, the grass area some more, just to get it a little darker. Um, and spread it out a little more like that, out this way. And I'm just gonna get some of this bluish black color and just kind of glaze all of that. I, I just want it darker, just like so. And you just let it, um, let it, let it, um, let it, let it be. I want to soften this area here. I don't want it really too, I don't want it too sharp. So I'm just gonna take some water, go around the edge just to soften. See, just to soften that, that, that bit there. All right, so it's not such a, a, a hard, super hard edge there. All right, now, if I pull back more, there's obviously a shadowed side to the bar now how that works okay shadow side to the barn all right let's take this same brush we'll go with a little bit of black touch of blue a little bit of water and we'll color the top part in real quick here probably end up using a little more black to it because it's a little bit on the blue side for me just like so so I'll probably use a touch of black oops that's just more blue that's my fault I thought it was black and sometimes you'll run into a mistake like that 
because they're so they're both dark and especially if you put them near each other like I did but that's okay it'll it'll work I'll just get a dark a dot of black and there we go kinda pop it in there and we'll kind of naturally blend those in wipe off my brush as you see it does kind of blend itself once it starts to dry it starts to melt into each other so you can keep some of that so no big deal all right so let me uh, touch the uh, screen here so you guys can see this in focus and you can see you know pretty much how it's starting to starting to look there all right okay Let's bring it back in and I'll suppose I'll probably end up working more and more on, on this side. Of the so what we'll do um, for this part of the barn here, I think I would want to probably work on the shadow. Um, I'm going to take my half inch brush. I remember, keep in mind that we're on a vertical surface. so being that we're on a vertical surface whatever I use for water it's gonna kind of pull downward okay all right so I'll just kind of get this going just like that but I gotta make it pretty damp and I'll keep it at the half inch range here I think that oh it's almost to where I got it it's got to be pretty damp up top you'll see why in a second okay I'll take a little bit of black with my liner brush and I'll go right here to the top and just let it pull downward. Okay, now obviously you don't see it pool, but you will. You will in about a half second. I'm just taking right where I was and I'll just see this. See what's happening there just let it naturally just kind of come on down there okay don't worry about there. just naturally let it let it flow down it will dry okay now while it's doing its, its thing there I can wipe off some of that up the door it's okay and some of this is fine. But you're gonna get a nice natural little gray, gradation of a shadow there. Basically all I'm looking for. No more, no less. All right, okay. Let's take um I guess we'll do a little bit of something over here. We'll take it right from right from around here. I'm gonna do it this way. Now be careful doing this because the water is going to collect and pool only from where you where you put it. All right, I'm going to take a nice little thin line of black, and we're just going to we'll come right here. Just like so. Now, while it's still wet. You can get away with it. Come on, there we go. we're gonna kind of help pull that right down. You see that, that gradation starting to happen there? You know, it's only going to pull as far down as you got that water. Now, when you see the water pool a little heavy, you just get a dry brush, just like that, and just as it as gravity takes it down. dry brush and the brush will soak up the water you need to just naturally just go downward okay I will take a little bit of water a little bit of black slight touch of blue I'm gonna come up top here All 
it's wet, you can manipulate the color. And I just wanna just block in color here. Remember the water pools downward, so it will even out. This is almost like watercolor. So you get your effects in while it's wet. Okay. All right. Now I like I like that color. A little bit of blue. I think I'll, I'll do with the blue. Right in here. I'll continue on with that nice blue shade there. I'll continue it. Still a wee bit wet so we can let it travel and have a little fun, just like that. And what's happening is that it's obviously mixing in with that bluish tinge. It's mixing in with that black. But you see how it's gathering, okay? And you have it work for you, all right? Just have it work for you a little bit. let it fade and it will it'll soften up and all that good stuff all right I'm just getting a little more black we're just gonna work on this awning right here I'm bring it on downward a little color variation just like that if you gotta draw right through your painting or paint right through your painting, just paint right through it. It's okay. All right. All right, just like so. I'm going to get a little bit of red. Just for a little character on the barn here. Just a little touch of red now I'm putting I'm adding paint as I t talk to you here dip my liner brush into the red a little bit probably on that side I'm gonna add a little bit of black into the red just a little darker tone there and it's just gonna deepen the black or deepen the red just need a thin line of it so right upon here. A little bit of that dark red. I'm gonna use a slight touch of water. It's a little thick. And you can greatly tell when it's a little thick. Um, for those of you who might be popping in, this is not um this is not watercolor paper. This is actually a canvas uh, sheet. Alright. If you must paint right, right through the tape there. All right, just like so. Now, this is the dark side of the bar, okay? So be, be mindful of that. This is the dark side of the bar. I'm treating the acrylic much like watercolor. All right, now on the lit side, I'll just use the cad red itself because it's gonna be much brighter than what you're looking at. So just use cat red, just like that. And just be mindful where you are. Now I have glycerin on here from yesterday and it's still wet. So I have to be very mindful of that. I'm gonna get a little bit of water into my cat red just to loosen up the paint. Not enough to, to um, kill them potency of the red but just to get it to flow a little bit and stay as close as I can inside the lines as close as I can anyway and so this is a, a 
liner brush that's doing all this fine line work right now, okay? I'm going to be going back over the dark half again because it's just not strong enough for me yet. At least not to my liking. I have to be a little careful because of the, uh, one, I got glycerin and stuff that's still wet, so I just have to, now when you see me do these lines, I'm moving my whole arm. Okay, so I just gotta be mindful of where I'm at. All right, but much like that. Now I'm gonna go back into my touch of black, put it into the red, all right? Cause I wanna, I wanna, um, deepen the darker side of the bar. Right in here. Let's make that a little deeper there. I just want a distinct shadow side, but it's still red, but it's red with the shadow. That's like so. All right, just like so, okay. Okay, I think that will do for that, that side. I'm still looking. If I feel it's a little too dark, I can always wipe some of that away, go in reverse, wipe a little bit of it away. Okay, don't worry about that. It's not the tape is gonna come off. But all right. Now let's take a little bit of um, blue, a little touch of black in that blue. I'll be a little water. Loosen up the paint just a little bit. Inside awning area, right here in the inside. Right up in there, you guys can see me do this. Good. Right up in here. Get that nice shadow working right in there. Now I have to do this at a weird angle because of the glycerin in the sky that's still wet. So obviously, I'm a, left, I'm a lefty, I'm a left-handed, so. I have to be a little careful. Once again, this is this barn is gonna uh, I'm taking a little more care um, doing this. As you can see, it's it's dark, but not fully, not fully black, but not all the way blue either. Um, black with a little color in it kind of softens softens up your work. I'm borrowing a little bit of this color just to bring it down here. Just like that. I still got a little bit of that color, so. Just like so. As you can see, the barn slowly comes together. All right, you get that transition by adding the water. And since gravity is gonna bring it downward, all right, you just work with it and you get that nice little transition, which is already dry. Cause you're not using glycerin, you're just using regular, just paint. All right, so it's, all that transition is, is already dry. All right, okay. All righty. So I'm still looking at things, still checking it out. Let's work over here for a second. I'm going to take, since we already have red here, uh, let's take some of that. I'm gonna use some of that. I'm gonna use a little bit more black into some red. And I'm gonna make more or less like ink, okay? I should, if I was wise, Use a script liner for this. Now, the difference between a liner and a script liner, I'm going to show you right now. This is a liner brush here. Okay, that's a liner. Script liner. All right. It's a script liner. It's a liner or a rigger brush. All right. 
this is a script liner. Script liner obviously will give you a much more fine line. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of this almost like ink here. It's just red and black mix. Uh, I gotta loosen this up a little bit, it's a little too thick. I'm on canvas, not on regular paper. All right. And I guess I'll add some type of lines of wood or, or whatnot into this. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Okay, but I wanna add it in cause I'll be glazing the rest. So I'll kinda keep it as straight as possible. straight as you possibly can. If you can, I'll bring some downward. Now it might look a little crazy for you. It might not look right, but it will in a second. Not totally black, but it's not totally red either. It's a nice little mixture of both. A little bit more on the rear on the rear side there. And once again, I'm just building quick texture on Mr. Barn, like so. And you'll see um, what's gonna happen as I do this. I'll let it tack up, let it dry a little bit. Okay. I will add to that color. I think we'll do a little yellow ochre. Just to kind of brown it up a little bit. The barn will be more of a of a glaze thing. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow ochre, put it into this reddish black mix I have. Alright. And it gives me a weird kind of a brownish um, color. I kind of want it for the door. I'm going to add just a touch of black just to darken it a little bit. Just a slight touch. Get a little bit of water. Loosen it up just a small bit. Now, for the door. Now it's still wet, so I can still manipulate this stuff. It's no glycerin, it's just water and the paint itself. Now I will take this. I kind of like the pattern, I like the patchiness, so I might keep it like that. I might keep it like that. I like that. I think I'll keep it like that. I'm going to go into my red now. I'm adding red to this ochre. And I'm going to add a little bit of black. But a little more red. Now remember, it's more of a glaze, so i got to add water to it. To lighten it up a little bit. Now, everything's already dry on this. So I can go right back over it. I'm making a water glaze. I can use glycerin to do the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna come right up to where the black is and we're just gonna come down with it. You see that? You see that nice deep look we're getting here? Right from the shadow. Okay, put it right in there. Now remember, I'm using water for medium, so it's just nice even strokes going all the way down. Now, if you go into this part where the rocks are, you can just wipe it away with your fingers. You got a short window to do that. All right, 
much like you see here. Okay. Just like that. Now, we're coming down to the back end here. Doing the same thing, go straight down. Straight down, like so. Look the way she looked. You got that kind of brown by mixing red, black, and yellow ochre. All right, and it is the shaded side of the bar. Okay, all right. Let's move over to the lighter side here. Before I do anything with it, let's get a little bit of, um, we'll, we'll touch it, we'll just use a yellow ochre. I'll get some water. Just pure yellow ochre for right now. Half inch brush. And a couple of light touches here. Just to block it in a little bit. Not worry about anything else, just the inside of the windows there. All right. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of this color, really light, thin color. And we're gonna just seal in the doors here. The doors are a little bit in shadow, it's okay. Pop it in there real quick. I think you guys can, no, you guys couldn't see me do that. Sorry about that. I just put in the color of the doors down there. Okay, let me, there. All right, I'm gonna get a little, little touch of, of blue. And we're gonna put that blue in the corner there, like going downward. Like so. I'm just adding a little shadow. So a little bit of that blue in there. It's just a, a slight touch of the blue, dark blue, up on the top, and we're angling it downward. So you get kind of a nice little transitional fade there between those colors. All right. You let it dry for a second or two. And I'm going to go with a little touch of black. Put it on top of that blue a little bit. Let it just fade downward there. So this blue black mix just kind of let it fade into its thing and it looks like that so you got black the blue and the little brown color there going on i'm gonna go from the bottom just to kind of thicker paint there i want to bring that brown back a little bit if the paint's still wet they're gonna they're gonna join together. And it's okay. See this letter? Just like that. Put it at an angle. Okay, let it do its thing. Right, so I gotta be a little, a little mindful of that. I'm just gonna put some nice little lines on the top here. A lot of shadow up here. Keep it as st well straight down as you possibly can. Take your time if you have to. And you're just doing little, little, um, like a little wood patterns and, and such. Yeah, come on down here a little bit. Some more now I dip into the water quite a bit just to activate the paint again and when you do so you know be my fault sometimes it, it might come out a little thick on you all right it's all right there we go keep it as straight as you can all right come out 
here, do some more, just add it in there. Why don't you keep it as straight as possible? And just adding once again, just a little bit. So grain, this is the lit side. So try to just put it underneath the awnings and keep it away from the centers if you can. All right, much like that. Just a few up there, okay? You have a little bit of a line in here. You can add it, you can, uh, you can thicken it up if you would like, up to you. This is up to you. Try to keep it even. Not like I'm doing. Some of mine, mine looks a little troublesome, but that's okay. Just like that. All right. It just gets a little lip, little shadow there. All right. And you can continue the lines if you prefer. Come on down here. And that you want to come in. A little bit more line where that where that lip is down there. Up to you. If you want to go downward, you gotta try to keep the darkness of this of this deep brownish red. goes pretty quickly I'm gonna take some water some ochre make a quick little wash here and right here in the center oh a little bit in here like this so it looks a little like the sunlight kind of kind of touching it over there just like that Let's take a little bit of red. Got a little bit of water in there. And we're just gonna kinda play around with that red, red in here. Let it melt into that, melt in a little bit into that, that ochre. Especially if it's still kind of wet. It'll bleed into each other. easily stain so just be mindful of that I'm coming up around in here as long as there's a little bit of dampness in the previous color they will bleed into each other all right and it will it will bleed into each other They'll bleed the colors will bleed in okay now I'm gonna get a little dark red and that's kind of come up in here come down a little bit pop a little red up in there Get a little bit of water. A little bit of water and I'm gonna kind of bleed that. Bleed, it, bleed that in a little. And it will kind of melt into each other there. Once again, they'll bleed into each other. Don't worry about that. As long as it's wet, it'll just 
melt in um, to each other a little bit. So have no fear um, with that. All right. Okay. Let's pull back. Let's see what your barn is looking at, uh, looking like so far. I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow ochre and water. It's still wet, so I can beef up some of that color a little bit. Just like that. Okay. Well, it's looking like a little sunlight peeking through there, here and there. And while it's still wet, you can manipulate. Have all sorts of little bits of fun with it. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow ochre out, pop some of that in there like that. You see that? Really have some fun with that. There's definitely a lit side and a darker side. Okay. All right. Mm. So I'm looking at it here. We'll add a little bit of a little bit of light bluish to the upper part in here. Not necessarily black. It's something to kind of give a little dimension here I'll wet it up a little bit all right a little bit of a little bit of color in there all right okay let's get the uh, focus on there Sharpen it up a little bit. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Okay, Doki. Now. Pretty much have this all set. Let's, um, let's expand this a little bit. So we have the barn pretty much established right into the painting. Okay, the thin black marker lines you barely see, you'll barely notice that it's even in there because of what we put on in the kind of a watercolor type method uh, for this barn. The cobblestones look pretty good. They're kind of uh, in their little dimensional thing going on with the, the black and the water mix. Okay, and since we use water, okay, a lot of this is starting to dry up already. Okay, starting to dry. All right, so let's put in some more um, more dimension now. We're gonna set this barn and its land back a little bit. We got the, the nice little shade here. This can probably be a little darker, but we'll leave it. Um, everything else seems to be all right. So I can probably darken in those windows a little bit by adding a touch of, of black in there. Um, once again, it just adds a little dimension. <clears throat> it's just watered down black. It's just to add a little more shadow. There. I just want to dull out some of that a little bit. So we just slap a, a tad of it in shadow, just to bring it down a tad, that's all. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna add some foliage in here just to bring it out. All right, I signed my name because I knew I was gonna be done, obviously in the month of I'm be taping this, which is February. But I picked a bad spot because I'm gonna end up covering that. All right, anyway, let's throw some darkness in there, some more depth. Um, I think I'll use a little bit of, um, well, for the sake of time, I'll just, use, I'll just use black. And what we're gonna do is set this whole barn and all that scenery back a little bit. All right. Now, for those of you who don't have a, uh, a natural sea sponge all right and you can work it with um, 
you can work it with a palette knife or, or not palette knife but um, some kind of brush I just use a sea sponge real fast okay and I got um, some black here and we're just gonna tap in some interesting shapes I did not uh, rinse the brush or, or, or rinse the sponge I did not um, because this is gonna be a very quick thing okay at least around in here I'll get some interesting see those interesting little patterns there I'm doing this is really for the outside edges and I'll bring it downward here just like that down here it's, it's fairly solid okay this down in the bottom make it fairly solid like that and it instantly brings your your um subject toward the back okay all right i'll get some interesting things popping here i'll kind of have it come toward the side like that all right and this is pretty much good over here on this side yeah we're gonna really work it because um a little more a little more open on that side um larger larger bush more or less i'm using a little lamp black in this um in this sponge okay i'll dip the sponge into this black here all right nothing but pure just thick just paint all right so i'll um kind of have it overhang here by the mountain like this that way bring it out out there come on down with it yes you cover some of your trees don't cry about it you all right bring it out that way I'm gonna bring one right here right right there it brings see how, how I got it past that and bring it downward Just have it join pretty pretty solid down below here though you need a nice solid area okay just like that I'll pop in a couple of bits in there like that and then leave it be all right uh, I think we're good there just like that once again I got it going up and over okay but it brings this scenery back now you got these guys up up front here okay all right let me rinse off this sponge we're getting close to the end here um, everybody you can highlight and use this sponge for your lighter green color if you prefer if you would like nothing wrong with using that okay you definitely can do it you can definitely do your highlights with the sponge okay up to you and what you're comfortable with more or less all right okay so we have a bit of um interesting um shapes happening here going on with this okay uh you know what we're gonna do i'm going to take this i'm gonna ball it up a little bit this same sponge all right i'm going into my red why not i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of loosen this paint up a little bit the red i'm talking about and we're gonna use this I gotta loosen up the paint All right. and let's give it a shot just add some of this red um, pop a few of them in here like this just here come on down here a little bit add, add a few little red bits so we got a different type of bush happening maybe a little little red bush it'll kind of complement that barn all right we're gonna throw some green in there but let's kind of complement it with a little bit of red at first we're gonna come over here and probably do the same thing pop a little well I don't have enough red isn't that something else the end part of the painting and I don't have enough red for the uh, flower but I would rather have not enough 
going to have too much and throw it away. Once again, we'll just dump this nice brush or this, this sponge into the red. Okay, all right. That should work quite fine. There, something like that. Oh, we'll kind of pop in a few bits in there like that. I kind of like that deeper red. We'll kind of highlight some more of it on this side here. Like I say, we're gonna have a little bit of green in there. Okay, just like so. So those little pops of red will really shine through. And kind of, we'll pop some back here a little bit, just like that. Red up here, it looks nice against that blue. Just like that pop some in the corner there let's get a little the red and green is good for each other there just like that I don't have to add them all over the place that that little bit what I've just done is more than fine all right okay we'll take the same sponge why not and let's put a little bit of greenery in there this green will be probably a little more vibrant. I really don't have to use a sponge for it for this part. Um, I can be a little more, a little more selective. Now, I do have, well, I'll just use, I'll just use phthalo. I'm gonna use a little bit of phthalo green. It's a little brighter green. So, I'm gonna use a little touch of phthalo. And, tiniest bit of, of white to kind of um, bring these bring it up up front a little bit not much white just a little bit I'll use a oh let's see mm, I could use one of these brushes or I can just use a fan brush I'll use one of these it's gives me a, a little bit of an interesting look and I'm just using what um, I'm using a flat brush it's got a lot of uh, bristles in it I don't want the the leaves too super bright okay and I'm gonna get some interesting little little, little leafy patterns Just kind of tap them in there don't don't kill all your black okay pop some of that in into the green there all right if you guys don't see that too well let's, let's zoom in a bit watch how to cover it up cover most of the page there like that you guys should be able to see that all right. And I'm just using a little bit of, of green. Pop it into the in the red a little. Don't kill. And I'm just doing little, you see, just kind of little things in there. Now it's a brighter green, so it's gonna stick out. Okay. And we'll kind of pop some in here. Get interesting little patterns happening just like that do not murder off your black okay yeah don't kill your black off get interesting little pockets there pop it into the red you see interesting little little groupings I'm really working in groupings Don't be intimidated. There we go, come on. That black helps you out. So don't kick it to the curb. Do not kick your black to the curb. Go over here on this side. We're gonna get a little bit more, a little bit more green. This is just really a beat down flat brush. The, the bristles are a little splayed. I'm using a darker green now. See that green's a little deeper. Okay, and I'll add, I'll add this deeper green. You can somewhat still see it, but it's a little deeper green than I used before. But that's okay, because we can add, we can brighten up some things there. Just like that. Come up here, give a couple of 
bushes. And once again, we'll kind of add some. I'm giving a slight push just to kind of change the pattern a little bit. I have a little bit of bright green on the tips. Just adding to all of that. Okay. But I am pretty much sticking to that, that deeper green because I'll build up on that green. Once again, a couple of touches. Just like that. As we go up into this area here, all right, I'm gonna lighten it up. And so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using dark green on the bottom, but I'm using lighter greenish white on the top. It's gonna give interesting. Let's, let's go here. I'll show you what it's gonna do. Keep interesting little, little little patterns going on there. Okay. I'm gonna mash this brush out a little bit. Just like that. And so I got a nice brighter green tip happening. So it gives me a nice, see, it gives me a nice little look here. And you can make like sunlight is hitting in there. See that? And so I got a light green tip, but the bottom of the, of the bristles is the dark green. So you got all sorts of little highlights and shades happening without even trying so hard. Alright. But you can see a little bit of that. Hey, bring some of that in here like that. But you see a little bit of that um that red shining through. And so I'm just using white and green, but the white is being contaminated obviously by the um, the green that I'm using. And so really I'm just kind of teasing where the sunlight would hit these guys. Okay. Now let's raise it up a little bit. We want to way up here. We're almost we're almost there guys. We're almost if you got that little bit of sunlight happening there. Interesting little little pockets of, of color. Little mounds of color in there. We're going to come out here and we're going to kind of pop in a few little bits in there, just like so. Don't kill all your blacks off. All right. All right. Let's pull back and focus. I believe. Let's get a little bit of white ish green here and we'll we'll pop in a few little highlights in there just on this on this edges like that all right all right only where you know that light's gonna strike all right I don't think I need to add much more to that. I think that's fine. Try not to overdo it. Try not to overkill it. And you should be a okay. <clears throat> okay. See, a beat up brush makes some of the most interesting and intriguing looking um, um, patterns for your, for your trees and leaves and bushes and brushes and whatnot. All right, I'm just taking a little bit of this white, greenish white. This time now I can add my signature because we're done here. Oh, thank you guys for viewing this. Sticking around. Like I said, it is a two-parter. I decided it would just be best to make it a two-parter for this. I knew the barn was going to take a little bit of time to do. Um, so, 
Now, I will show you something a little different with some uh, painting like this. I have to pull back a little bit. We're gonna take the tape off. It's, it's more of a diptych type of uh, painting. It can be used as a, a single painting, or you know, it can be bought as a single painting, or each one will be a different um, different painting. I'd be careful on this part. Let's go up from the bottom. It kind of didn't matter. I have no nails, so we must use a knife. I think we're good. I don't think I have any more surprises. So, we can continue here with the bottom. And as you see, now I kind of prefer a uh, taped, because it gives you a nice, interesting, uh, really pro looking um, border to the painting. Watch what happens when I separate. Now that's obviously that's what it looks like together. Okay. But when you separate them, different look. It actually looks a little larger. Because now your eye will help fill in what's missing in between. Now once again, this is a canvas sheet, as you can tell. I will separate this penny just a little bit here. I'll just kind of spread it apart there. Okay, now you see it kind of make well, this is a little at least I can make it a little even there. Okay. But now you got that gap, but it, it kind of makes your painting a little larger, spreads it apart more. Okay. So you can look at it spread apart or you can look at it together. Whatever floats your boat. Okay, but as you can see, if I took um, something and blocked one side and blocked the other, you could see that you can see that each one is its own separate painting. You see that? Each one is its own part of a barn, its own uh, separate painting. The composition is still there. Okay. So the barn has been uh, glazed. The barn has been glazed on. So we did the glazing colors. So there's still patterns to the barn, and you got the sunlight hitting on one side. You got the nice tonal shift with the barn. Okay. You got your your wood grain patterns in there. Um, even with the rocks. Now you got true cobblestones there and the color gradation. You got the shade for the shadow part of the barn. All right, you got your bushes here in the front, which is a different green entirely than the green of the grass and the, of the trees there. The mountain is pretty much nearly the same color as the clouds, so it's a little further back. You got the pine trees that are in gray back there, so they're a little further back. So it really doesn't matter if they were apart or separate to each their own separate painting, but they're all together. So I really hope you enjoyed this and um, uh, let me know what you're thinking. Thank you very much. I shall see you when I see you.